Hey guys, Zoe from Ignite here. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be looking at context in A Midsummer Night's Dream. But before we begin, make sure to look at our resources on our website at ignitehsc.com.au. And if you enjoy this video, make sure to give it a like and subscribe to our channel for more content. Let's get into the video. So it's important to note that this text was written in the time of the Renaissance in Europe. So this period was one of rapid transformation and it created kind of an altering of paradigms in every aspect of life. It's important to note that this was a time where there was a lot of development in art, culture, also science, and a lot of the humanities such as philosophy, literature, and history. The Renaissance gave birth to the idea of Renaissance humanism. Let's unpack that a little bit. Prior to this period, life was dictated by concepts of God and other religious imagery and a lot of the ideas of how life moved forth was in terms of fate and providentialism. So the ideas of free will and humans controlling their own destiny were very much a new phenomenon. And this gave artists a lot more creative freedom in how they explored different themes and ideas prevalent to the human experience. So within A Midsummer Night's Dream, Shakespeare does remain adherent to the ideas of Renaissance humanism in all aspects except for one, as he kind of throws the idea of Renaissance humanism into question slightly when he talks about the idea of avid adherence to it, to a fault, is just as damaging as if you were to adhere so strongly to ideas of fate and providentialism. So this is prevalent to his discussion of theatre within the text and how we should engage with theatrics and the imagination, where he argues that strict adherence to logic and reason kind of strips away that liminality between reality and fiction, which is so prevalent and important to the idea of the theatre. This is a work very, where he very much emphasises art as a form of expression which is so important to identifying aspects of the human experience and he really heroes imagination as a gift. A key influence on this text was Ovid's Metamorphoses. A lot of Act 5 is concerned with Ovid's Metamorphoses which was a text which was a series of poetry composed in 3 to 8 AD and it looks a lot at, as the title suggests, metamorphosis and ideas of transformation. So within this text, Shakespeare adapts Pyramus and Thisbe, which is the play which is performed by the Mechanicals in Act 5. This is actually very similar to another one of Shakespeare's texts, Romeo and Juliet, where it's looking at two lovers where one of them mistakenly believes the other is dead and then kills themselves. And then when the other realizes that the other has killed themselves, they also commit suicide. So within this text, um, the play is used in Act 5 when the Mechanicals perform in front of the Athenian court after the marriage of two of the main characters. The Mechanicals don't do a very good job of this performance and Shakespeare uses this as an opportunity to comment on the theatrics and how theatre is an art and that inherently it should be cherished within society, kind of going back to the Renaissance humanism idea where the mechanicals are very literal and they don't really rely on the audience very much to interpret the imaginative aspects of the play, which kind of destroys the magic of theatre altogether. So this is kind of going back to Shakespeare's commentary on use of Renaissance humanism at its extreme as just as bad or as detrimental as if you were, were adhering very strictly to religious paradigms on how to live life. So the next thing we're going to be looking at is English country fairy law. So this was particularly interesting and impactful on Shakespeare's interpretation of fairies within this text. So at the time this was written, the predominant image of fairies was as sort of fiendish creatures which were known to create chaos and disorder within societies and they were actually feared by a lot of communities. So what Shakespeare kind of did in this text was completely alter the image of fairies where the idea of fairies such as Oberon and Titania as having this sort of, I suppose, benevolence and this ability to heal complications kind of completely flipped the idea of fairies on their heads. So you can kind of credit Shakespeare for the more conventional understanding of fairies that we have today as being gentle, beautiful creatures. 
and prior to this it was a very different perception of what fairies contributed to society. It is interesting though to look at Puck's character who was sort of adapted from the character of Robin Goodfellow and this fairy was particularly associated with hellish imagery and was cr um, created to kind of be a figment of hell. Um, but it's interesting, Shakespeare doesn't completely flip this perception of, on its head as Puck still does cause a lot of chaos, but it's very clear that it's in light-hearted farce, I suppose, and it's not going to cause any real damage. So he really does reinvent the idea of what fairies are in texts, literature, and in general society. So the last thing we're going to be looking at is Elizabethan theatre. So at the time of this play's um, composition. The idea of theatre was that it was reserved for the nobles and the higher classes of society and it was very much designed to kind of reinforce the legitimacy of the queen and the monarch at the time. So a lot of the plays were very much complementary of the queen and kind of found ways to incorporate themes which could reflect better on Queen Elizabeth and in impact on public per perceptions of the royals. So within this text, the purpose of the mechanicals is very much to demonstrate aspects of Elizabethan theatre and to comment on how theatre impacted society at the time. So this is kind of seen in Quince being a bookkeeper and performing the prologue at the beginning of Act 5, Scene 1's Pyramus and Thiz, and also with the idea of the mechanicals playing women, as this was a very predominant thing that actors did at the time, as there was an acknowledgement that women shouldn't be in the theatre. Further, the idea of the mechanicals butchering this play and their frequent improvisation kind of talks to the idea of theatrics and performance as an art form and as needing to have a connection to the imagination in order to entertain audiences. I guess we can also look at Quince's over-explanation of the plot in this Act 5, Scene 1 performance as his over-explanation kind of plays back into that idea of excess reliance on logic and reason as kind of dismantling the magic of theatre and its idea as being a liminal space between reality and fiction. And as well, it's important to note that within this text, Shakespeare also criticises the audience as when you look at how the Athenians engage with the theatrical performance, their kind of quizzical criticism of the performance as a whole shows that audiences need to be willing to succumb to the power of the imagination when they view literature and theatre in particular and that imagination should be seen as an art form and an escape from the increasingly logical sort of um, representation of society. So that's it for context in A Midsummer Night's Dream. Make sure to like and subscribe to this video if you enjoyed it and head over to our resource platform at ignitehsc.com.au for more info and longer resources. Thanks. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. If you do like the content, subscribe to our channel and we'll have more videos coming your way. That's right guys, thanks for watching and please make sure you check out our online resource database. We've had a team of state rank achievers and heads of English put these together for you, covering everything from essay structures and examples all the way through to craft of writing and comprehension skills. So check them out at ignitehse.com.au and we look forward to seeing you in the next video.